Hello and welcome to a very special Geekiverse video, featuring the third largest LEGO set in existence, numbered 75827, Firehouse Headquarters, inspired by the Ghostbusters franchise. This colossal build dwarfs every other modular building in existence, standing about one and a half times the size of a standard modular building. An extra base plate is added to it as well, making the base an impressive 48 by 32. Three of the building's sides are surrounded by a sidewalk, with just a hint of detailing on one of the sides of the sidewalk, along with some signal lights and a little trash bin right next to them. The traffic lights are a neat design which can actually be bent but not quite all the way. The building has one ugly side, but it's the back one so it's of the least consequence and can be overlooked. The other three are made with a quite high degree of detail with a mostly repetitive pattern which does make the building look pretty realistic though. The very bottom floor is grey in contrast to the red bricked upper floors. It also shows some of the air conditioning details and uses smaller windows in comparison to the top floors. Now the front has the most going on in terms of diversity. We have the large door first and foremost which opens up on the inside. Then as we go further up there is a firehouse and ghostbuster sign. The grey bricks on the first level turn red as you climb the building. The windows have grey brick details all around the building. It is probably this feature which helps complete the iconic look of this set. As we get to the very top, there are some nice details just below the rooftop. But the roof itself is nothing too special. It does however serve as a very important tool to keep the whole thing together and making it as sturdy as it can be with such a large amount of bricks. The only real object on the roof simulates some vents, but it is actually used as a mechanism to open up the firehouse itself. So with the firehouse opened, it's time to take a peek inside. Starting at the ground floor, which serves as both a garage and a reception. We get some all important Ecto-1 repair tools and cardboard boxes. There are cabinets with name tags next to the wall, in which Ghostbusters can store their protopacks and stuff. We also get a reception desk and an office desk, with some red designs and prints all over and around them. Next, let's take a look at the staircase, which is pretty much similar throughout all the floors. You get two fire escape exits, both on the first and second floor. The railing pattern is however consistent throughout the staircase for the most part. Nothing much special going on here, save for the emergency telephone at the very bottom of the stairs. Now let's take a look at the right side wing, which opens up to the outside on the first floor. We get a bathroom with plasma stains all over it along with a neat toilet, sink and shower. Even a little mirror sticker is present to complete the detailed look. LEGO went so far with details in this one that they have even included some pipes running along the wall. On the second floor we get a little lab with all sorts of ghastly details and test tubes lying around. Also some stickers are present on the wall and the door which leads to the little edge with the fire extinguisher and the top of the pole which a ghostbuster can use in case of emergency to slide right down to the bottom floor near their gear lockers. This is also the only real play feature in this whole set. Before we take a look at the three main rooms this is a good time to point out that the main rooms are not separated from the lab or the bathroom by any walls. So if the whole thing closes up, it feels like the bathroom and bedroom are kind of the same room. Awkward. This doesn't bother me all that much, but I feel it takes away from a bit from the building's design. Making it in my opinion a lot less slick and thought out in comparison to say LEGO's modular buildings, which really set a high design standard. This is not a huge flaw all in all, but definitely something worth pointing out. Now on to the main rooms. On the first floor we get the kitchen and dining room along with an absolutely awesome looking arcade machine. There are all sorts of cool provisions in the kitchen, especially in the fridge. If we open it up we see a frozen pizza, cartons of milk and some cheese slices. There is also a really cozy fireplace right next to it. The kitchen sink design is pretty unique as well. Little details like the cute toaster and all the other accessories probably make this my favorite room of them all. 
onto the bedroom. We get three cozy beds, which aren't that practical to actually put minifigs on, but look extremely cozy on the other hand. Finally, we get to the big room on the second floor with the pool table. The design of the table differentiates a bit from the pool table in the detective's office set, for example, since it comes with little ball pockets. There are all sorts of details on the walls, most notably the dartboard and the larger stands. We get a vintage CRT monitor, old school computer and even a boombox radio. So real blast from the past in this room. There is also another smaller table some, and some cardboard boxes. We get 12 or 9 minifigures in this set, depending on your definition of a minifigure. There are free ghosts, which are cool addition, but I personally wouldn't consider them real minifigures. With the exception of Slimer perhaps, the most famous obnoxious ghost from the movies, who is kind of the team's pet in a way. Next, let's take a look at the non-squad members. First, we get the zombie driver, with a nice scabby style inspired hat. Rotting flesh and a black jacket make up his defining print features. The library ghost lady actually comes with two interchangeable hair pieces, depending on how evil or not she decides to be. Positioned on a spooky base to simulate her floating like a ghost, her print matches the typical pale ghostly appearance. Tully looks confused and stressed out, just like in the movies, with no time to even dress properly, as his print suggests, or to even comb his hair for that matter. He does come with an additional headpiece, though, in which to better perform some experiments in. Dana comes with her scary outfit seen in the first movie's finale. Janine has secretary written all over her, and the print captures that perfectly. On to the team itself. We get all three original Ghostbuster members as well as Winston Zedenmore. Their prints are obviously almost identical except for their little name tags with initials. The printings on the side of their arms is also very welcome. All of them of course get alternate faces. Peter Venkman's alternate face is perhaps the most interesting one. Now all that is left is to summarize this side. Well, first of all, there is no doubt that this set is awesome, details and buckets of fun. The real question is, is it worth the relatively high price? If we look at the question from a simple price per piece ratio, it would appear so. However, I don't think the overall design is on the same level as some of LEGO's modular buildings. That's again not saying it's bad at all, and yes, sure, this set has an enormous amount of detail but the execution and positioning of them is perhaps not completely thought through. So if you are split on getting this set and aren't really a Ghostbuster fan, then the answer is probably you don't want to be spending this much money on a set unless you have unlimited funds, of course. If you really like the concept of it and also like the Ghostbusters though, I cannot recommend it enough. Personally, I am going to fool around with it a bit and see if I can make some modification or perhaps even a different kind of building. If you are into mocks, you get a ton of pieces you can use here, and in that case it is probably arguable you should get it for that reason alone. So that's it for my take on the Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until the next video, take care and bye bye